Happy Friday. Welcome along to the vlog. Walking down the path and I can smell that Mayflower. It's a maize balls. So I've just left Gemma behind collecting one of Chance's Doge coins. Um, on the way into Clumber, or down the 614, which is the road that we travel down, there is an absolutely beautiful display of bluebells. Just a snippet in here to show you what nature's putting on for us. And of course, this is gonna to come to an end shortly because all the trees now have uh, burst their buds and the canopy is getting into full swing. I also noticed that Looking at that, sorry, that wasn't a comparison. <laughs> Looking at that, they've obviously got some cattle in here somewhere, because that's a new addition to the walk. So we found the gate actually when we came in, a jar. Not a magic gate, didn't turn into a jar, it was a jar. And uh, unfortunately, I just don't think a lot of people get the fact that if there's livestock in a field, you got to shut the gate behind you. Anyway, let's carry on, see what other wonderful surprises there are that, uh, that are new to us in May. The lake's just around the corner and Gemma spotted a field of geese. So I'm guessing the National Trust have planted these as an experiment. They seem to be growing well. And of course we never do a walk around Clumber without the obligatory Ford crossing. Somebody's been through this morning in a motor vehicle. Is it slippy in the it's slippy everywhere, Gemma. So, uh, whoa, it's extra slippy. Oh I'm gonna take my time. I'm just gonna pretend I'm icy. You hold onto the rail while you are doing. I think it's because all the... Whoa! <laughs> I'm going to put my phone away. No, I should keep it running, because if I go... It'll be amazing. I can't hold on to anything, because I've got the leads in the other hand. I don't think any of it's deep. It's just extremely slippery. Oh God, it is so slippy. I'm surprised the cars don't end up in the bloody rhubarb. There's a nice scenic view. Some birds doing some dipping. Yeah, Gem, there's nothing to hold on to here. And it's very slippery. One step at a time. You see, in the winter, when there's no algal bloom, you can walk across this relatively quickly. Oh God! <laughs> it's quite funny. I shouldn't be slipping behind that rock because the. We're so close. It doesn't help with the fact that the, all of the cobbles are kind of uh, convex. So they've got like a little semi-circular crown on them, which makes you want to slip off. Sorry, Duck. He's gone and landed in the rhubarb. Right, we're almost there. Yeah, there's a load of sediment being dropped by the water there, so it's not as slippery. Well done, Jam. Made it. That was two and a half minute crossing, that was. Normally it doesn't take half that time. Well, that's two and a half minutes that you'll never get back, folks. This is always fun. When we've got uh, the cows on the path saying, ye shalt not pass. Uh, news flash, they're not cows. It only looks like they've got one teat, if you like. Don't want to be milking that. 
So let's see how we get on with these. Because we're in the thick of it here. Friendly cows. Oh, he's a big fella over there, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, just keep moving. They don't like it when you go around back of them. He is indeed following you, Gemma. Right, move quick, please. He's coming. he's coming. I can see he's coming. Yeah! That's it. See you later, pal. So you just shout cow at them and they... Yeah, or something. Something that sounds loud and violent. Chuck Norris, that, either. It's that brown one I don't like the look of. He's got a bigger udder than all the rest of them. Run, Jem! <laughs> oh, they're kissing, look. There we go. Straight through the middle of them. Like Moses, through the Red Sea. Nice to come into a quiet and well-running kitchen. Saladette's working perfectly. Everything would appear to be the correct temp. Oh, defrost mode, come on. I don't know who keeps leaving these notes, but I'm gonna have to tell somebody off. Good morning, boys and girls, welcome to the vlog. Let me just get this camera back up a touch. So today's gonna be all about heating fermenters and installing the new silicon heater pads, hopefully without any issues. And in order to do that, I need to hook it up to the control panels that I have for the fermenters. And here's one of them, but I have taken it to pieces because while I've got it off and we're making improvements, I'm gonna rejig it and uh, instead of mounting, for instance, these double pole, double throw, relays with hot melt glue and stuff like that we're going to actually put a little bit of din rail in there and some other improvements and something else i noticed as well one of the reasons why i'm taking this apart in the first place is because you'll notice in the past week or so this power supply unit failed so we're going to put an indicator light in there so we can see that we have 12 volt power to all of the ancillary pieces of equipment inside the box the, you, we can tell if 240 goes because the SDC will turn off but if the 12 volt goes we don't know and these little one amp power supplies LED drivers are perfect for the job because we've got nothing in the box that's consuming any electricity the biggest load is probably the motorised valve but that's only on briefly for a matter of seconds so I've been on eBay and I've bought some more power supplies and you'll notice that these if you look at the back are much slicker there's not as much going on they're not as busy so the first thing to note is on the new one they've got the high voltage and low voltage separation down the center this dark green band down the middle so you've got your let's have a look now you've got your high voltage this side low voltage on this side and there's good separation all the way down the middle on the old ones they were this way. So you had the separation down the center as can be seen by that little anti-tracking slot there. That's to prevent any arcing and sparking from one side to the other. But as you can see, all of these components are large. And if I can get it into focus, maybe, maybe there. They're large components and you can see like the diode rectifier, diode bridge there and uh, what else have we got? The resistors, you can see all the resistors are there and the difference with this one is everything's coming in discrete packages. Look how busy one is compared to the other. There's a real big difference. So for instance on here the rectifier bridge is a built-in little package. All of the resistors are little tiny pick and place resistors. Really relatively small in comparison to the big boys that we had on here. So I'm going to hope that this is a huge improvement and we're going to stick it in to our new control panel. 
but the trouble is with that the pins in and the pins out are in different locations of course so it all needed rejigging so I'm going to spend half an hour to an hour just rebuilding this panel putting things in the in a more accessible and more conveniently serviced position and then we'll have a look at putting one of those heat pads onto a tank and maybe we'll have time to see if it does actually ha make a difference on heating the tank up a couple of degrees we shall see spend quite a bit of time on putting this together in fact it's almost three o'clock but as you can see we've got the panel indicator there telling us that we've got live 12 volts in the unit I've set it to cool to make sure I wired up the valve the correct, correct way around and you can see in here we've got a tilt repeater for the orange tilt as it says we've got a countdown timer that gives us a burst of CO2 every 120 minutes that little 5 volt book converter there is to power the tilt because it doesn't like 12 volts I decided to put the covers on the 12 volt power supply and just makes things a little bit neater and it enabled me to screw the whole thing down we've got the earth cable coming in there I've changed all the cabling out to a smaller gauge this is 0.75 I could even go to 0.50 gauge which I've ordered some but I didn't have any in stock it just made everything a little bit easier to wire up and of course the thinner the wires if there's any faults then the wires will burn out and act as a fuse but it's not going to happen anyway um, what else have we got in here well that's about it and then the relays at the bottom so you have a look at that and then if you have a look on how it was done before quite similar but things in different places and this has been retrofitted after retrofitted after retrofitted of course it means that we've got stuff like this just glued in wherever we can and they are all hot melted in as well and somebody mentioned on a comment the other day this should use silicon if possible but I've actually gone for my mechanical fixings here so everything's screwed in which is even better so now what I need to do is cut a section out of this cone below here and we're going to stick in a heat pad there's one of the heat pads that's a 380 watt that was 40 odd quid and this one is a 400 watt slightly smaller but also slightly cheaper so I'm gonna give this one a whirl mainly because it's got a thermal cutout on there and we'll just see how things go so I'm gonna draw around this first stick it to the tank and then we'll come back when we're ready to give it a whirl so we've got the heater on and you can't see it right now let me just go and grab the tank roll didn't get myself set up very well for this little piece of camera but here we are nonetheless uh, so what have we got I've put the heat pad in here and we've cut out a little bit of the insulation oh that feels nice and then I've just stuck the insulation back on again just to, well, put the insulation back on really but if I pull it off totally you'll see that there's the heat pad and if I hold this temperature probe thingy at it I don't know if you can see that it says 32, 33 degrees now it's been on for 20 minutes and it's not getting any hotter than that it was quite difficult to get it on the tank without any creases because the glue sets really fast on these so I heated it up a second with some power disconnected it from the power when it was hot peeled the backing off stuck it to the tank and as soon as it sticks to the tank the tank acts like a big heat sink and that's slightly warm in the corner there and it just wicks the heat away and the glue almost sets instantly so I had to pull it back off and mess about to try and get it in the right position so my concern was we stick these on the tanks and they're giving us about 400 watts of heat now if they're not stuck on a tank of course they just keep getting hotter and hotter and in the past the ones that I've bought have just uh, burnt up so this one has got a lower heat density a lower watt density 500 watts over or 400 watts over this big square area and I'm really pleased with actually how 
like the hottest point on here is 49 degrees and that's at uh, I saw a 60 then but that's at and around the fail safe it's got a little thermal cutout just here so yes we do want that to get hottest first because that will turn the blanket off and then of course the idea being to keep that heat and in and prevent any interference we just stick our piece of insulation back over the top that we cut out and this worked a second ago so there's no reason why it shouldn't stick back on again now and there we go it looks after it's sealed up like nothing's changed to the tank so it's been on like I say about 15-20 minutes it's risen 0.2 of a degree the tank's gone up to 17.2 it was at 16.917 when I started I've also got in line I've put the tripod on the table, hold on. Numpty. So yeah, I've also got in line a power meter. So I've been recording the power and we've been steady at about 440 watts. We're only going up and down by about 10 watts. But that's fluctuations due to the voltage more than anything else I'd assume. So I'm keeping my eye on this. I did the calculations for it before I bought these and I think the 400 watt heater would heat up the whole tank by around 10 degrees in 12 to 18 hours which I thought is a good time scale if we want to do a diacetyl rest at the end of fermentation and the tank sat at 18 then a few hours in the afternoon it should get it up 21 and then we can leave that for a couple of days and walk away the trouble uh, and then con continue to crash is what I meant to say there the trouble with um, the heat blanket way that I had before was that we could maintain a temperature there but we could never quite rise raise the temperature of the tanks particularly in winter so that meant we weren't able to do proper diacetyl rests and ultimately the beers did suffer from some clarity issues and other things as well not necessarily off flavors but definitely issues of clarity so I'm gonna go and start another project I'm just gonna pull off this box here and I'm gonna upgrade it the same as that one because I'm gonna put the other heater on this tank and uh, I'm gonna leave this for as long as I need to and we'll come back I'll just leave that there we'll come back so I'll tell you the time now is 3.38 and we're at 17.2 degrees so let's see how we get on over the next couple of hours so we're back it's 5.50 and we've managed to achieve a temperature of 18.6 degrees which I think is wonderful that means that this this piece of kit can more than cope with heating the 500 litre vessel pretty quickly I'd say as well and it's not just on the STC that that is recorded it's just disappeared but the orange tilt was up on the screen and indeed it was reading the same temperature so it has begun to heat the whole of the tank this doesn't feel hot at all it's slightly warm to the touch but that's it I mean it's not even body temperature I wouldn't say it's very comfortable it's a very nice gentle heat I'm going to turn it off anyway it's done its thing today I just need to find a way of wiring it into the control panel because it's just got these two fly leads coming out and I think I would like to see double insulation on them so the stuff that's coming out the side of the tank there is an earth cable and then it's just 12 volt signal cable or a temp probe 
that is carrying 240 volts so I want to make sure it's at least double insulated and of course the uh, the tank itself is on an RCD so and then we've got an RCD on the main breaker for everything but uh, it's over there somewhere or oh, we can't get to it but trust me I'm a doctor so there we go I've just about finished the second of these control units and as you can see the brewery it doesn't take long for this place to get into a mess and cable on the floor I've actually run out of 0.75 cable I've got two wires heating and cooling to run from the STC and then they've got to they've got to come over here to switch the relays and I do that because we can just change these relays I've said it many a time we can just pull these out and change them when they're kaput and it's a heck of a lot cheaper than changing the STC 1000 if we get a sticking relay there so that's what we do I'm just gonna leave this though today and it's ready to receive those two last bits of wire and then uh, it's ready to go on the wall and back into service so I think it's been a productive day it might not have been the most exciting vlog I've done for a while but I think we've made a breakthrough on the fact we now have a safe and effective means of heating the tanks uh, in a quick manner as well and it's something that we can look at expanding so if we move on to bigger tanks in the future four of those pads strategically placed around the tank would I feel be enough to heat up 2000 litres for several degrees over a day or so and that's what we're looking for anyway I'm going to leave it there boys and uh, we'll see you on the next vlog which will probably be tomorrow me finish finishing this stuff off we'll see you then cheers